I just noticed on my YouTube channel that after three and a half years of making these videos, which are mainly for teaching, but also some are for research and other purposes, I've now got over 150 videos uploaded onto my channel. And certainly I've gotten a lot better over time. With each video I learn something new and I work out how to do something in a little bit different and a better way. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I've worked it all out, that I've mastered the art of making videos, because it's an evolutionary ongoing process and that's what lifelong learners need to always acknowledge. But what I have learned is that in each and every one of those videos, there has been some degree of planning. And the more complex videos they are, the more planning that needs to go into them. For instance, in this video, I'm not reading from a script at the moment, so I'm going to need to pause, go back, uh, edit afterwards, to try and get this voiceover matching up to exactly what I want it to say. Sometimes I've just got the main points in my head and I'll run with it. What I do is really amateur media production. And as much as that might not sound like it's professional media production that gets viewed a lot, think about what most people are watching most of the time every day. Really, we could estimate that sometimes 95% of what people watch on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, is not done in a TV studio. I would argue, and I've argued for some time, that the strategic amateur can be perceived as more professional than the hyper-professional themselves. And that comes out of the selfie moment and YouTube culture generally, where authenticity, the nature of authenticity, is changing all the time. I like being spontaneous in my videos. I don't want to read from a script all the time. I don't always even use notes, and that can make it a very time-consuming process. And I'll give you some insight here by drawing on a video that I made in 2015 into what can happen, both in terms of the serendipitous moments of creativity that you can't plan for, you can't script, but also the more annoying moments where you've just put yourself into a tricky position and you need to spend some time working things out. Firstly, thank you to all those students who have been really actively creating things in seminars and outside them. It's great to see, and if you haven't looked at the ALC201 hashtag recently, well, <laughs> please make sure you do. Sorry, it's getting a little late and Tiffany's going to fall asleep soon. It's getting... <laughs> please make sure you do have a look at the hashtag, uh, because there's some really, really great stuff there. This me lecture is basically... <clears throat> the purpose of this me lecture, apart from just... <laughs> Tiffany, you want something? You want something? And the student responses to that video were really interesting because most students who I talked to in seminars after they watched that video thought that I was pretending there that that was all an act. You want to get down? I can assure you that it wasn't. That happens quite a lot. The planning for some of my videos looks like this. So I'm probably not the best person to be telling you how to plan your videos. But I do tend to develop a full script when I make more complex videos. For a recent welcome video I made, I scripted the entire thing. But don't think that this is just what I followed. In the end, when I brought the creativity of my sister in, and the performances got acted out, and then I went through the editing process, things changed, and it's often a change for the better, it usually always is. So even when I'm editing, it's sometimes where the best ideas come, and I'll go back and I'll get some other footage or I'll hunt up something on my computer to make it work. I have never drawn storyboards, but this is another completely valid option for when you're preparing for and planning a video that you should take into account. I have got the opportunity to show you some storyboarding from a student who was making his very first video. So I wanted to say a very special thank you to Chris Coper, a student of mine in 2015, who decided to make a claymation video. And it was absolutely brilliant what he did in storyboarding his ideas and the complexity of the project, which he did not understand at the time, was very well served by his storyboarding. And here's a little bit of a glimpse at the final outcome.
And I wanted to emphasize here that you do not need to feel like you need to make something like this. This is one great way to make a video. And even if you're going to do something completely and radically different, you can see what people can do with no training and just learning by making and doing. There are so many different ways that you can make videos and planning is always a fundamental part of it. So whatever you do, whether you develop a series of dot points, whether you flesh out a full script, whether you generate storyboards, make sure you plan early and plan well.